Morning guys, today's video is going to be 10 handy tips when working on a moped. So I've still got a cold, can't shift it this year. <clears throat> anyway, you don't bleed all the same. Um, and these, as long as you can take one tip away today and use it, then it's job done. Thank you for the 90,000 odd people that have watched my other videos. There are lots on there, mainly speed fights, but generically, as I said, they're all the same. The clutch, the belt, the rollers, is all going to be the same place. Um, and the same information about the carburetors may look different, but generally they're the same. So today's chat, first one, have the right tools. Speed fights are always star shape. The other ones, you need Allen keys, um, Yamahas, flatheads, you know, uh, and also um, cross ones. Occasionally, for some of the other bits, you need specialist tools. So this is for the clutch, okay, to hold it. This for the variator. I know I've done videos where you get a claw hammer and you use that with obviously a great big bar, but that's the proper one for speed fight. I don't often use it. Um, they are different designs. Um, Stator coil, that's a big one, you know. They're all these little ones, but they are only five, 10 pounds on eBay. So that's really cheap, um, but generally you'll need them tools. Very basic for the basic jobs. Um, second tip today, do you know what you're doing, okay? Watch my videos, <coughs> only videos. Buy manual, you know, speed fight. Um, I haven't used that one in years. Obviously, stalker. I didn't even know I had a manual for this little bike, but it turned out I had um, the Aprilia ones, and obviously Piaggio. That's a huge book. They can be a little bit overwhelming and not make a lot of sense when you look at all the bits and bobs. And that's why people can turn to YouTube and watch my videos and our people's videos to help them. Um, and that's generally what I do this for. I don't get paid. I just do it to help out people, and hopefully you'll be able to progress and learn a bit about your bike. Regular maintenance number three, WD-40 is it's a blessing, you know, it's really good. Brake levers, where you put your key in, back brake on the um, cable model, that seizes up quite often, so WD around there, WD little bits and bobs, you know, it won't hurt and it will really save the longevity of your bike and stop things from rusting up. Number four, I suppose, the voltmeter. They are a blessing. <clears throat> and this leads on to number five, about buying the right part. A lot of you, and everybody I suppose does it as well, is they will, all of a sudden the bike will no spark, and they think, right, change spark plug. They then do the HT lead, the coil, and then uh, look at the stator coil, take that off and buy a stator coil, and it turns out to be the CDR unit. And you think, you know, 20 pound CDR unit, and they've just paid all this hundreds of pounds out for all the other little bits and bobs. Yes, some of them are mobilized and they're expensive. So that's where you've got to know your bike. And you've got to weigh up sometimes whether it's actually worth you doing it. You know, um, after you pay that, that the immobilised on a, on a speed fight, you need a bypass unit and it's a big job. So you've got to weigh up with the odds whether it's worth doing or selling on. But that voltmeter, once you tested whether there was actually any power going to the spark, any power going to HT lead, with a power going to that, you could, have, you could have worked out and it would save you a lot of money by just these. And again, they're not a lot of money, but they really are handy and you're always, always going to use it again. So worth buying one of them. A lot of the problems on these car, uh, on these bikes, carved, on these bikes are the carburetor. If I'm really honest with you, you know, this was the carburetor probably here, but you've got different, lots of different carburetors you can have, but generically they are all the same. They have a jet, they have a main jet. Um, a good clean, take the top off. I've done lots of videos on these. Wear glasses, get it in the eye, really hurts. Buy the right spray, you know, um, clean all the jets out and everything else. I say I've got videos on, I've got loads of videos on these bikes, and it's hard putting names to them, you know, the twisted front end, um, doing the CDI, explaining bits and bobs. And as I've gone on over the last year of doing videos, I have progressed and tried to make it easy. Someone said to me, Mark, you good, do good videos, but they're crap. I can't see what you're doing. I was using an old iPhone 5, I've got an iPhone 6 now, which is better. And someone said, get a GoPro, hence I'm using it today. Much wider angled lens, but unfortunately for me, it's the second time I did it. I left it all in the case. You can't hear bug all, but I've checked now and you can hear me. And where I am in the room. But obviously a cold doesn't help. Anyway, buy the right part. And that was about getting a voltmeter and then you save some money there as well. Six, as I said, a lot of problems with the carburetors. Seven, upgrades. You know, it comes down to buying the right upgrade. A lot of people, again, they buy, you know I hate these. It's good make, Polini, Molossi, they're the parts you should be getting for your bikes. But to buy these, yes, it makes a bit more noise. As soon as it rains, sucks in water in there and your bike just stops. 
You know, stick with the original one, maybe get a sports in, in filter for it. That's a lot better idea. But it's it's a lot of upgrades can slow you down. You know, people have put a bigger jet in there. I've done a video on this one about jetting up. Um, it's 54, they put a 70, 80 in there, all of a sudden the bike won't go anywhere. The bike does 50 mile an hour, they're really happy, they buy a sports exhaust, and all of a sudden they've got no back pressure, now it's doing 40. So it's learning what upgrades that you would, would help as well. And I said on this video about up jetting, you can buy a sports exhaust, you can change the rollers, you can do all this bits and bobs, and it still won't go more than 30 because it's CDI restricted. So that's why sometimes the manuals, or watch other videos, and people tell you, I've done this, doesn't help. Um, that leads on to number eight as well. Um, rollers. People often say to me, what ones to put in there? Well, it's difficult, isn't it? If your bike does 50, and you want to pull away faster, then get lightweight rollers, three, four grams. They will pull away a lot, lot better, but you might lose a bit top end. If you've got a bike that does 35, and you want more out of it, changing the heavyweight rollers, you're going to slow down a bit, pull away, but you'll get more top end. You're going to gain six odd miles an hour by changing the proper rollers and then adding bits to it. You know, generally, I suppose about 45 is happy on most little bikes. Here in Britain, 16, you're only supposed to do 30 mile an hour, and that's the law. That's why a lot of the bikes are restricted to 30 mile an hour. On the British roads, 30 is silly. You know, it is deaf, but at the end of the day, I sort of see it by the law. As long as you're doing 30 in a 30, but where I'm in a rural area, you know, back roads, cars doing 60 mile an hour down in back roads, and come behind a little head doing 30. You know, as a parent, it's a bit scary, I suppose. So I'd rather them do a little bit faster, whether it's against the law or not, it makes a lot more sense doing it. Know your bike, okay? That's number nine. Understand that if you're riding, you know the bike, you know it rides fine, then all of a sudden, you know, it starts acting up a little bit. And you end up, you could have a back flat tire. These do get punctures quite easily, the tires do go down. Ball tyres, your brakes are starting to foul. Check it, know your bike. If it rode well one day, and all of a sudden now it's not, and it's all acting up. I had a guy here, asked me to change his belt for him, and when I pushed it in, I knew straight I was pushing it. It was hard to push. I said, your back tyre's flat. Oh, it's been like about a month. I wonder what was wrong with it. I kept skidding out at roundabouts and so on. Know your bike. Get a manual, watch videos, look at your mate's bikes, but if you know it's different, because you're riding these every single day, you'll know. You know, all of a sudden you can't see that well down the road, turns out your headlight bulb's gone. You know, that's for not on your safety, but other people seeing you as well. You know, so know your bike, know what's wrong with it. Ten, your paperwork and keys. Keep them safe. If you're 16, give them to mum and dad somewhere, or have your own drawer. But the reason why that is that when you, you're only going to keep this, you know, a year max, you're going to progress onto one, two, five, and do your test, get a car, whatever. When you go to sell it, no logbook, no key, you can lose money yourself, it annoys everybody, it makes it harder to sell, and it's just silly. And then no one can tax it again, so keep hold of your paperwork, keep hold of the spare keys somewhere safe, and you'll know they're there. Keep the bike safe, keeps you safe. That's pretty simple, really. That's what I'm saying. You haven't got ball tyres, your brakes are working really well. Yes, I ride big bikes as well, and you see my other videos. And when I'm riding around on a bigger bike, it, People still pull out in front of you, but I find when I'm popping these little peds around, testing them and so on, going to MOTs, I find people will see me, you know, and they just pull out in front of me. They think they've got more right to be on the road than you have. You're always going to get that. As a parent, it's really quite worrying. As a child, you get used to it, believe you me, that people pulling out in front of you. And I'm no kid anymore, but they still do it. They don't care. Oh, a little ped, I'll pull out in front of him. By keeping the bike safe, having good tyres and good tread in the tyres, your brakes work well. Um, you've not got flat tyres and so on, your lights are working. When someone does, you know the bike will handle better. So it's 50% your fault for the bike. And of course, if you do have an accident, the first thing I say, you were speeding, your tyres are bald, you get all this. You know your bike is 100% A-class. I know MOT does that, but that's a year down the road. You can MOT this bike, I can get a flat tyre coming home, and it's got a flat tyre, and I'll, I'll flip out of the first roundabout. So keep the bike safe, it'll keep you safe as can be. I'm not going to go on about wearing proper jackets and proper helmets and stuff because that's that's new here and there. Bulbs as well while we're on about it. I mean, as I said, you can take one handy hint away. These bulbs in these bikes aren't your car bulbs. They may look the same. That looks like a car bulb, 65, um, sorry, 55, 65 volt, uh, volt uh, 55, 60 volt. It's not, it's not even volt, is it? It's 12 volt, but it's 55, 65 watt. I'll get it right in a minute, won't I? Shame I can't do a take on this. These aren't. Peugeot Speedfires are 35. Same as this one's 35. 
Okay, so what people do is they put a car bolt from Poundland in there, it's too big a voltage, and what happens is that coil is putting so much voltage into the front, actually it's dimmer. All your other lights don't work properly. So actually know what you're buying. These are a big and that's the most common thing I find is when you've got dim lights going through the MOT, they're not working right, is because they're too much voltage for the bike. These little things only pop out, they can slow the bike down as well actually. So, so I can't take that bit out, isn't it? But we keep going anyway. Keep your paperwork safe. Generically, as I said, these bikes are all the same. Um, Speed Fight 3s, they don't like me, I don't like them. And there's a reason why, is, and the panels in this one, you can see three bolts here, cut the bolts back here, screws, and they'll come out. Great. But underneath here, there's four. What a lot of kids do now, or adults even, they rip it out, snap a bolt off, they drill through and put cable ties. Oh, I hate cable ties. But, if you took a bit of time finding out where they are, that's why I said to you the other day I did a video on this. Um, when I took the bucket out, you can get straight to it. This you've got to take panels off, you know? Spend a little bit of time looking where the secret screws may be. Speed Fight 3s are really horrible because when you get all the screws out and there's no more screws there, they have little clips in, so you've got to slide it one way, slide it the other way, and that's what breaks them. And then when you try and put it back on, they never go back right, and you've got a flappy panel, and off it comes. So check out other videos. Not necessarily mine, but you know I do try and explain little top tips sometimes of like the claw hammer. Um, when doing an engine as well, um, I don't take it off anymore. I can sip it to one side, and I can get the crank out and put the crank back in again. It saves time, effort, easier. So watch out for handy tips. Having tools as well does help. And I said just the very basics. These will get a part of most of the bike. 10 mil, 8 mil um, socket and and um, screwdrivers and all that sort of stuff and spanners. It does help. All right. So have the right tools. Take your battery off. Charge it up while you're working on the bike. I've said that many times. If you're leaving a bike for three or four months, take the battery off. Pop it in somewhere warm, in a house, in the shed, somewhere there. Don't leave it on the bike, it'll go flat. And it's just saving money, you know? 20 quid each time you lift your battery on, it goes flat, it's dead. You know, using the kickstart all the time. I've done videos now on, on electrics, lights, tires, twisted front ends. And it gets difficult try and explain all the details and I'm doing what I'm doing now. I rattle on, I think of something else and I think of something else. You know, so I put on a video like front end, but I eventually get round to where, you know, something's about the rear of the bike, so it does help. So we've gone over today tools, and I'm just gonna run it quickly now. Know your bike, regular maintenance, voltmeter, buy the right part. Um, most of the problems are CDI and carbs, you know, um, that's where the voltmeter helps as well for the CDI. Upgrades, get the right ones. Don't necessarily go for um, Polini and Molossi, but they are good make ones. Exhaust, you've got Lera Vinci, you've got lots of ones there. Get the wrong exhaust for the bike, doesn't create back pressure, all of a sudden it's not going to go nowhere. You've wasted 70, 80 pounds, 100 quid, whatever you pay for them. Sometimes it's worth looking up and saying, my bike runs much better with this, and my bike doesn't. You know, and I try and do them as well. Up jetting, I've done a video on up jetting. It explains about how the bigger sizes and smaller sizes, and it can go wrong. Um, and the rollers just explain there, you know, three grams for pulling away faster, eight grams more top end. You can combine them as well, I do that. I put three eight and three threes, and I find you get a mid range, and it's much better for you. Know your bike. If it starts acting up or playing up funny, stop. Just ask someone to look at it, watch a video. Don't keep going, you know? Flat tire on a bike, or ball tire, no brakes. It's your life, do you know what I mean? Regular maintenance on these is really handy. It's simple, five minutes, you're not playing your Xbox or whatever. Five minutes on these will save your life and keep the bike running as well. 40s are different. All 40s burn oil. The cheaper the bike, the more they burn. Not necessarily all the, all the way, you know, depending on what life the bike has had before. But I find regularly checking your oil um, on the 40s, you know, and some have a dipstick, you see it going down. That will stop the bike from seizing, you know, because they do burn oil. And if the bike's had a hard life, maybe Yamaha, but a hard life, it burns oil. So for just that little check, we'll save you a lot of money because if you seize a 4T, throw it away. There's no working on it. 2T is a piston. And I've shown you pistons before. This is caused sometimes by this cheap shit. Um, rather than going, I'm not saying you've got to pay loads of money, but the Halfords one's quite good. What happens, the bike goes so fast, you get so good out of it that the oil stops becoming a cool, uh, sorry, lubricant and becomes a coolant. And then they just seize, you know, that's simple enough. Using cheap oil can cause that, and I've done many heads, you know, many pistons like that before, just because that's a pound cheaper, you know. I'm not saying you've got to buy 20 pound ones, 10 are there, 8.99, I think it is from Halfords. Really, really handy, okay. And same as the bulbs, don't go to a car place, go to a motorbike shop, 
and maybe 50p more, but it's worth getting the right part for your bike. Don't just buy anything that says it looks the same, that will do. Right, keeping your bike safe keeps you safe. Explain that as well. Now, videos. I get a lot of comments. I don't get any money from doing this. You know, in my shed, I've got lots of parts here, so it's handy for me, I suppose, sometimes. I've done lots of shock exhaust ones as well. But I get lots of comments, and it's quite nice. A lot of people have watched my videos and said it's been really good. Me and my son watch your videos. Really handy. That, that's a lot. You know, I feel good about that. Um... What I thought of doing this time is if enough of you comment on this video or other videos and I get you know like five or ten comments saying, Mark, can you do so and so? You know, please explain why this covers the variator, what this does, whatever. I will do a video for it and then put it on YouTube for you there as well. The same as I listened, you know, I'm using this GoPro now. I can't see what I'm doing and I have to do a whole video again because I left the back cap on and of course no one could hear me. Not good. But I understand, you know, as long as you walk away from one thing then you're laughing, you know, and I'm happy, my little 10, 12, whatever it was, I said 10 handy hints, but as long as you walk away with one thing, then it's job done, isn't it? Um, like and subscribe, people, that would be really, really handy as well, at least I know what I'm doing is, is helpful, um, you know, and we can go from there, I've often about hit people about heated grips on bikes as well, I took a set off a ped, it's too much power, unless you can change the regulator and up the power and so on, I took quite a few of them off there, panels, you know, Spend some money out, get the right bolts, get the right bits and bobs. I mean, you know, like this little tool here, you know, that's a must if you're doing front forks on big bikes, you know, taking the wheel out and so on. Um, it's 20 pounds to take the wheel off at a garage, that's a tenner. I've done it three or four times, it paid for itself. This little bit I've used, I don't know how many times, but it's really, really handy. Keep them safe. Paper, keep safe, I've done that one as well. Horns, you know, and all that lot, make sure it's all working right. I've done a pre-MOT video as well about what to look for. I've tried doing lots and lots of videos, oils and bits and bobs, as I said. Like and subscribe, guys. Take care of yourselves. And, uh, yeah, let the bike take care of you. Take care. Bye-bye.